chapter 4, part 2. I'd like to focus on this part 2 um, about the quantitative measures of reactor performances. Um, let me uh, imagine a kind of perfect reactor. We have a reaction A plus B as reactant which is going to the desired product D. So A and B are fed into the reactor with an equimolar, uh, no, 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 a stoichiometric um, the composition for the reactions. In this case, the molar ratio of A and B should be 1. And then, inside of this perfect reactor, A is totally reacted with B. So, in the final axis stream, you could find only desired product D without A and B, because A and B are totally consumed inside of the perfect reactor. In this case, I can say the conversion of A and the conversion of B is perfectly 100%. However, unfortunately, we cannot make such a perfect reactor with the conversion 100%. Let me think about the real reactor. Here, still we have the main reaction like A plus B is going to a uh, desired product D. So A and B are introduced into this reactor. Plus, sometimes we could have some impurity. I'd like to say that impurity as C. So <coughs> there is some side reactions like A plus C is going to the byproduct E and F. Moreover, uh, the desired product could be reacted with the one of reactant A, then which is going to G. Also, A and um, B are totally are not totally reacted into D. So in this case, you could find a lot of things in the exit output stream. A B as reactant, which sh should be would be the unreacted reactant, and also C impurities and uh, the desired product for uh, with the side re react. Uh, the byproduct E and F and G. This is the real situation. We'll have a lot of uh, impurities, unreacted reactants plus a byproduct. So <coughs> we should think about some measures of performances of a real reactor, like conversion, selectivity, and yield. You will learn about those three parameters in this subchapter 3. Uh, those parameters or measures are closely related to the extent of reaction. Um, let me think about the uh, stream composition specification about the real reactors. Sometimes Reactants are fed at non-stoichiometric ratio because we cannot guarantee the 100% conversion. And also sometimes the stoichiometric composition uh, of reactants results in very low conversion. So let me define a uh, limiting reactant and uh, excess reactant. Which one? I, which uh, reactant is more than the stoichiometric ratio. Here, here is an example. We have a 2A plus B going to D. If the flow rate, molar flow rate, of the reactant A in the input stream per the molar flow rate of B in the same input stream is larger than 2, then I can say a is the excess reactant and B is the limiting reactant because A uh, is more than we uh, expect from the stoichiometry. So let me generalize this kind of relationship. A is the excess reactant if the molar ratio of A to B is larger than 
the stoichiometric coefficient ratio of A to B. Or A is the limiting reactant if A is smaller than B uh, uh, when compared with, with the stoichiometric ratio, then I could say A is the limiting reactant. Here is a measure for the uh, non-stoichiometric ratio, which is called percent excess. Uh, let me get the same example. You have a stoichiometric ratio E in the denominator, and you will measure the deviation from the stoichiometric ratio. Let me assume that I have introduced uh, 2.5 moles per second for A and 1 moles per second for B. In that case, the molar uh, mole flow ratio uh, is estimated at 2.5, which is deviated from the stoichiometric ratio 2.0. So, from this uh, equation, 0 0.5 per 2.0 by 100% is going to 25% excess of A. You should say A. 25% excess of A in your system. Here is an example. I'd like to back to the furnace problem. Natural gas from Rio Arriba is fed to an industrial furnace here, and here is the natural gas, at 1.00 mm SCFD, along with 25% excess air. So 25% excess air is the condition for the non-stoichiometric uh, problem. So this one is going to this airflow. The flue gas, or the exit gas, is tested and found to contain both CO, carbon monoxide, and carbon dioxide at a 1 to 10 mole ratio. Also in the flue gas is nitrogen, oxygen, and H2O. That's it. And the question is that calculate the flow rate and composition of the flue gas. Of course, we should use the material balance equation. Uh, input specification for the natural gas were given from example. Oh no, no, the uh, example 4.5. Uh, at that problems, we have calculated the uh, atom flow rate because the chemical reaction equation are not given to you. In that case we should use the atom uh, or element as the component for material balance equations. So anyway, from the example 4.5, we have calculate those values for the carbon, for the hydrogen, oxygen, and nitrogen. Then let me calculate uh, the flow rate for other uh, compounds. Anyway, we should think about the excess air. So the given number is 25% excess air. means we have 25% more oxygen when compared with the stoichiometric uh, amount. So it means the starting point is to calculate the amount for the stoichiometric values. So stoichiometric amount of oxygen can be expected from those two chemical reaction equations. You know, from the combustion, we have two products, CO2 and H2O. So carbon plus oxygen is going to CO2. And the other thing is 4H plus O2 is going to 2H2O. From the first chemical reaction equation, we could uh, calculate the amount of oxygen. Uh, let me see. We have uh, carbon here, and the natural gas have 53.28 kilogram more carbon per hour from this data. Then require it require the same 
more of oxygen per hour from this chemical reaction equation because the molar ratio between carbon and oxygen is 1. So from stream 1, actually the from, from the natural gas stream, we need to have the stoichiometric amount of this value of oxygen. Also, we have another reaction here and from this chemical reaction equation, we could expect the stoichiometric amount of oxygen required for this reaction. Uh, what, what was the amount of hydrogen? This value from the data uh, calculated from the previous example requires um, the this value of oxygen because you know uh, every four more of hydrogen requires one more of oxygen. So 209.34 is the value from the hydrogen per stoichiometric coefficient of hydrogen. Then it is going to about 50 kilogram more oxygen per hour is required for getting the stoichiometric uh, reactions. We have one more um, sources here. Uh, even in the natural gas, we have very similar amount of oxygen there. So this is the oxygen atom, so 0 0.86 per 2 is going to this value kilogram more diatomic oxygen or oxygen molecule per hour. So again, we have three uh, sources for oxygen and the summation of those of uh, three amount is going to the total required stoichiometric oxygen flow. So, no, no, that's summation. Okay, uh, from the air input stream, we need to have those two amounts of oxygen. But, very small amount of is there in natural gas, so total required stoichiometric oxygen flow for this air stream is this one plus this one minus 0 0.43, something like that. So. Uh, from the viewpoint of stoichiometric amount, we need to have 105.9 kg more oxygen per hour in the stream 2, input stream 2. But the problem statement is saying that I, we will introduce 25% excess air. So this value by 1.25 is going to the total required excess oxygen flow. The nitrogen flow nitrogen flow rate in the stream 2 can be easily calculated from the ratio between oxygen and nitrogen. So this value comes from the oxygen and the ratio between the nitrogen nitrogen to oxygen is 0 0.79 per 0 0.21 so it is going to 494.7 kilogram kilogram more nitrogen per hour okay then right now we have the value about the input streams in terms of oxygen and in terms of nitrogen in the stream 2 for the air stream then let me try to calculate the output of um, the content in flue ga gas. In this case, we, should, we will use the material balance equation. Actually, the mole balance equation for each element. Let me start with the nitrogen. As you know, from the viewpoint of element or atom, you don't need to think about the consumption and generation time. Also, this furnace is operating at the steady state, so you don't need to think about the accumulation time. Therefore, for the mass, the mole balance equation for each element in this system, input is equal to output. Then, 
we know the all values about the input. So here is the calculation results about the uh, moles of nitrogen atom in input stream. Let me check it. So where is the nitrogen? Um, nitrogen fluorate in the stream 2 was uh, about 500 kilogram more nitrogen molecules per hour. So this value here by 2 because we are thinking about the nitrogen atom plus 0 0.72 which comes from the natural gas. Even in the natural gas stream we have very small amount of air including oxygen and nitrogen. So you should think about that 0 0.72 and this value is about the uh, nitrogen input value which is equal to nitrogen in output and uh, I want to calculate the uh, nitrogen molecule instead of a nitrogen atom. So this value per 2 is going to nitrogen molecule molar fluorate. So here, here is that. And how about hydrogen? Hydrogen source is found only in the natural gas stream. So the, this value comes from the data 209.3 or 209.3 here and then which should be the same as that of output and I'd like to calculate the amount of H2O instead of hydrogen atom or instead of hydrogen molecules actually we don't have any hydrogen molecules there so all hydrogen atom is going to the water so inside of water we have two hydrogen atom so this value per 2 is going to this value. So the molar flow rate of water in the axis stream is this one. How about carbon? Carbon, the only carbon source is the natural gas and this is amount is given to you from the previous example and this is going to just the output. And um, in the output, you have two kinds of carbon containing molecules. The first one is carbon monoxide, the second one is carbon dioxide. We have one more information about those two compounds the ratio of carbon monoxide to carbon dioxide. That is the 1 to 10. So we could use this one. So, unknowns the molar flow rate of carbon monoxide and carbon dioxide to two unknowns and two equations so you could solve the problem then uh, for carbon monoxide and for carbon dioxide you have these values of the molar flow rate in the axis stream uh, let's go to the fourth element uh, balance equations how about oxygen there are two oxygen sources. The first one comes from the air. So I'm thinking about the oxygen atom but uh, in the given value, for the given value we have oxygen molecules. So this value uh, by 2 is the total amount of oxygen atom in the stream 2 for the input. The other thing is comes from coming from the oxygen source in natural gas, right? Then this is the value for the input for oxygen atom, which should be equal to oxygen output. And what kind of oxygen sources are there in flue gas? Uh, water, carbon monoxide, and carbon dioxide. This one, this one, this one. I have calculated the amount of H2O, CO, and CO2. So you have set up some values about that. Plus, one more thing, we have oxygen. We don't know the amount there. So this is unknown and mm, I'm thinking about the oxygen atom for this balance equation. So 2 by NO2 up here. So finally, you could calculate the molar flow rate of oxygen molecules instead of oxygen atom in output stream. Then you could calculate all of the things about the output stream and some input streams for the stream 2 of air.
Okay, I have said about the uh, stream specification for the real uh, reactors. Let me go to the system performance specification. I'd like to define some parameter or some measure about the reactors, which is called fractional composition, uh, com uh, fractional conversion, fractional conversion. F for fractional, C for conversion of species I. I'd like to emphasize that fractional conversion should be defined for each species. So you should put I here, which is equal to moles of reactant consumed per moles of reactant fed. It means um, which percentage of reactant is consumed inside of reactor. The measure of that is the fractional conversion. Also, fractional conversion could be defined only for the reactant, not for the uh, product. You know, in the den denominate denominator, uh, you could find moles of reactant fed. So about the product, the denominator is going to draw. Then you cannot define the fractional conversion about the product. Again, fractional conversion is a measure of which percent of reactant is converted to the product. So it should be defined as one of reactant. Okay, here is the equation. For the continuous reactor operating at steady state, here is the mole balance equations. In minus out plus generation is going to zero. So you could obtain this equation. And on my uh, by reshuffling the first equation, we could have out minus in is equal to generation time. So this one, I mean the difference between in minus in and out is going to the numerator. So, fractional conversion of species I, I should be reactant, equal to in minus out per in, or the numerator is going to the generation term. Actually, okay, so genera generation minus consumption or generation term. So, minus summation of the product of the stoichiometric coefficient uh, with the extent of reaction, okay, per the feedstock. Or uh, by using the first relationship, you could obtain this one. How is e equal to 1 minus fractional conversion with input? That is to say, let me say, uh, your reactor is working with 30% conversion. It means 70% of input is converted to... No, 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 okay. The, 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 the conversion, fractional conversion of your reactor is 70%. So 30% of um, the reactant I in the input is remaining and found in the output. So this equation is very useful. Here is the definition. Also please uh, think about this equation. Uh, this relationship is obtained for the continuous flow reactor at steady state. How about batch reactor? Very similar. The fractional conversion of species I is initial amount minus final amount per initial amount. It means uh, which percentage of an initial amount of reactant I is converted to the product. Uh, and also the nu numerator is going to the generation minus consumption term. If you have the fractional conversion of species I at 1, it means you have a perfect 
Richter, but it is very rare, a rare case. Okay, here is example 4.8 about the ammonia synthesis. Ammonia is synthesized from nitrogen and hydrogen by the following stoichiometrically balanced reaction. Of course, nitrogen plus 3 hydrogen is going to 2 and H3. We have this reaction. And then let me think about those three cases. Case 1. Nitrogen and hydrogen are fed to an ammonia synthesis reactor. The nitrogen feed rate is 1000 kg mole per hour. The hydrogen feed rate is 3000 kg mole per hour. So let me say each compound is N and H. N means the feed flow rate of nitrogen and hydrogen. And here also the extent of reaction is given to you, 500 kg mole per hour. Then calculate the fractional conversion so, of each species. I have said fractional conversion is defined for each reactant. So you, in this case, you have two different fractional conversion. The first one is the fractional conversion of nitrogen and the second one is fractional conversion of hydrogen. Let me calculate those values. For the nitrogen, um, fractional conversion of nitrogen is equal to input 1000. And how about the, the, the generation term or consumption term? So minus and the stoichiometric coefficient of nitrogen, in this case minus 1. And extent of reaction J is 500, which is given to you from the problem statement. So 0 0.5 uh, conversion, fractional conversion of nitrogen. In the same way, you could uh, calculate the fractional conversion of hydrogen, also 0 0.5. You know, in the case one, we have fed the nitrogen and hydrogen into the reactor at the stoichiometric ratio, like 1, 2, 3. When on the situation where the reactants are fed at stoichiometric ratio, fractional conversion of each species is the same for all cases. Again, nitrogen 50%, hydrogen 50%. And then let me change the uh, ratio for the feed. Let's go to case 2, nitrogen, hydrogen, 1 to 5 ratio to an ammonia synthesis reactor, okay? And nitrogen feed rate is 1,000 kg mole per hour. Therefore, hydrogen feed rate is 5,000 kg mole per hour. We have the same extent of reaction as the case 1. Then calculate the fractional conversion. So, um, the fractional conversion of nitrogen is equal to the same, like 500 per 1 size is going to 0 0.5, which is the same as that of the case 1. Nothing changed from the viewpoint of nitrogen. However, we have increased the amount of hydrogen 5 times. 5 times. Then, the, the denominator changes from 3,000 to 5,000, right? So, in the same way shown in the case 1, 3 comes from the stoichiometric coefficient of hydrogen by 500 per 5,000 is going to 0 0.3. Um, what is the remitting reactant of uh, case 2? We have increased the amount of hydrogen values from the stoichiometric ratio. So nitrogen is remitting reactant. And excess reactant is the hydrogen. So fractional conversion of remitting reagent or reactant 
like 0.5, is larger than the fractional conversion of the excess component, 30%. Of course, we have more amount of the uh, hydrogen in the denominator in this equation, from the, which is deviated from the stoichiometric amount. So the excess, the the, the fractional conversion of the excess reactant should be smaller than the fractional conversion of remitting uh, reactants. Let's go to the case 3. Uh, we have the same ratio between nitrogen and hydrogen, and still the nitrogen feed rate was fixed at 1000. However, in this case, I have changed the extent of reaction xi from 500 to 1000. For the nitrogen, fractional conversion of nitrogen is 1000, the same because the feed rate is 1000, and the extent of reaction here with the stoichiometric coefficient of 1. So for nitrogen, the conversion is 100% great. However, for hydrogen, the fractional conversion cannot reach the 100% because this is the excess reactant. 3 stoichiometric coefficient of hydrogen, 1000 xi value with 5000, is, which is going to 60% of conversion to product. Another example, 4.9, still we are in the ammonia synthesis. And suppose we want to make 1,000 kilogram more ammonia per hour. This is the exit rate, the output rate of ammonia. If this value was fixed. Explore the effect of adjusting frictional conversion of nitrogen on the flow rate in and out of a continuous flow steady state rectum, assuming that nitrogen hydrogen are fed at a stoichiometric ratio. So the basis of this system is 100 kilogram more ammonia per hour for the axis stream. Also nitrogen hydrogen nitrogen and hydrogen were found at the axis stream because they are not reacted to each other completely. The given value was the basis like that, and based on the chemical reaction equation, um, the extent of xi is obtained. Like 1000 divided by 2 is going to 500. The extent of reaction is 500 for this reaction. Then, uh, we should develop the function of frictional conversion for describing the input stream and output stream. So, by definition, frictional conversion is the mole change per initial mole is going to here. So, I mean, the input stream is equal to, to the uh, generation term per fractional conversion of species i. Then, by using several values, we could obtain the description about the input molar flow rate. So, let me think about the graph. x-axis is the fractional conversion, and y-axis is the molar flow rate. For each is comp uh, each compound. Then here is the hydrogen input, and here is the nitrogen nitrogen input. The moles of input is inversely f the proportional to the fractional conversion of each species. So we have this kind of things. How about output? 
output is equal to 1 minus fractional conversion with input. Then uh, the input molar flow rate can be described by uh, frictional conversion and the extent of xi. So put there, then finally you could obtain this equation. That is to say, um, the output stream is defined by, well determined by, the frictional conversion and the extent of xi. So, you could um, draw those graphs for input molar flow rate, uh, no, no, output molar flow rate of species hydrogen and also species nitrogen. So, let me follow the square. This open square indicates hydrogen, and this closed square are, are related to the nitrogen. Okay, so what kind of lessons we could have? Uh, as flow rate increases, as flow rate increases, the fractional conversion decreases, right? Okay, the fractional conversion decreases as flow rate increases. At very high flow rate, the fractional converse, conversion converges into the value of zero with here. What does it mean? And why? Because the retention time of reactants becomes shorter as flow rate increases. There are no chance for reaction from the viewpoint of reactants. Therefore, fr fractional conversion is going down at a very fast flow rate. The flow rate in the upstream should be zero to obtain 100%. So at flow rate zero, uh, the values about the flow rate of each compound is converging to the zero. That is to say, the retention time of reactant should be infinity for getting 100% conversion. Let me think, think about the recycle strategy. Here is some process. Before adopting the recycle strategy, we have reactant, which is introduced into the mixer, then reactor, then separator. Finally, you could obtain the product. If you have a very low frictional conversion for your reactor or for this process, then maybe you could have a lot of unconverted reactants from the separator in the stream 2 of the separator. So without recycling, you would discard the unreacted or unconverted reactants to environment. Let's try to save our environment and let's save our cost by recycling the unreacted or unconverted reactant to the mixer, then finally going to the reactor. In this recycle, recycled process, we could define two different conversion. The first one is single pass conversion, which uh, connect between the flows in and out of the reactor. reactor. The other thing is the overall conversion about the process, which com the connect between flows in and out of the whole process. The overall conversion is larger than the single pass conversion. It is the reason why we are using the recyclers. Process flow calculations with recyclers. I'd like to intro introduce tear strategies, but they are nothing. In the tear strategies, first step, tear the loop at the reactor inlet here. This is the reactor, mixer, separator. Between the mixer and reactor, I have tear the loop. And write material balance around each unit 
starting at the tail so you will start from the reactor and continuing all the way around the loop so the second one is separator and the third choice for the system is mixer you can develop the material balancification for the reactor separator and then mixer <coughs> the step three use the equations to relate the flow in the tail stream to the flow in the feed stream flow in the tail stream here and flow in the feed stream so you can uh, relate uh, this stream with this stream the other thing is group strategy uh, in this case you will take the whole process as the system and then anal analyze the whole process as a single system that is the simple group strategy actually nothing you can do it of course here is the example still ammonia synthesis every example is ammonia then ammonia then ammonia we want to produce 1000 kg more ammonia per hour from nitrogen and hydrogen so nitrogen hydrogen uh, as the fresh feed and then mixer to the reactor and the separator and ammonia is found in the product stream stream p and recycled stream has nitrogen and hydrogen which is introduced into the first mixer before the reactor let me check the name of the stream fresh feed ff and stream one for the reactor stream two out of the reactor and product p stream and r stand for recycle recycle stream derive an equation that relates the nitrogen flow rate into the reactor here the stream one to the reactor fractional conversion single pass conversion maybe assume the reactants are fed as stoichiometric ratio that is to say one more nitrogen to three more hydrogen are required and that all unreacted reactants are recycled so 100 percent recycle is assumed here um, so let me develop some materials balance equations for the nitrogen so tear here before the reactor and then let me start with the reactor for setting up the material balance equation for nitrogen so for the reactor we could use the fractional conversion actually fractional conversion uh, is a part of material balance equations so nitrogen in stream 2 is equal to 1 minus fractional conversion nitrogen stream in 1 I have said if you have 30% of conversion it means 70% of nitrogen is unreacted and found in the stream 2 so this is the uh, material balance equation for reactor how about separator um, separator has one output stream and no 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 two output streams with one input streams however nitrogen is found in one of output streams with input streams so 2 is equal to r 2 is equal to r how about mixer uh, mixer has fresh feed stream recycle stream and stream number one and each stream has nitrogen so those three things are related what is the input we have two input r and fresh feed r and fresh feed with one stream stream one they are uh, equal to each other then that is the material balance equation for nitrogen for each unit by combining those three equations we could obtain a kind of a lesson fractional conversion of nitrogen in this case fractional conversion is fresh feed rate per reactor feed again fractional conversion is determined by fresh feed per the stream one 
the ratio of fresh feed to stream one. Okay, so of course, uh, this number is less than one because the stream one has a more amount of nitrogen than the fresh feed, of course. Also, if you have more amount of recycle, even if here we are assumed assuming that 100% co conversion, but anyway, more recycle amount, which is about uh, which is related to the denominator value, then conversion is going to the lower value. More recycle, lower conversion for the single pass conversion. Anyway, let me get back to the question. Derive an equation that relates the nitrogen flow rate, nitrogen flow rate into the reactor, this one stream one, into the uh, uh, no, no, to the reactor fractional conversion, this one. So, again, let me change the position of those two things. So, the molar flow rate of nitrogen in stream 1 to the reactor is inversely proportional to the fractional conversion of nitrogen. We need to have a value about the fresh feed nitrogen flow rate. The fixed one is 1,000 kg more ammonia per hour from this process. So then uh, let me uh, develop the overall material balance equation by taking the whole process as a system. Of course, reci the recycle stream is involved in the system. So we don't need to think about some uh, output streams from separator or input uh, streams f to the mixer. So this is for the ammonia, this is for the nitrogen. The overall uh, material balance equation for the ammonia should be output or stream P is equal to input or fresh feed plus generation time for the ammonia. Then the output stream or P stream was fixed in terms of ammonia here, 1,000 kilogram mole ammonia. So this is the 1,000 is equal to no ammonia in fresh feed going to zero, and the um, the stoichiometric coefficient of ammonia is plus two with the extent of reaction. The unknown is the J value. I mean the extent of reaction. So J is equal to 500. Let's go to the overall material balance equations for the um, nitrogen. So again, output is equal to in plus generation term. In the output, you cannot find any nitrogen, so zero. And how about fresh feed? This is unknown because we need to get the information about the fresh feed nitrogen. And we know the value about the extent of reaction from the previous material balance equation for the overall system. So 500 by the stoichiometric coefficient of nitrogen is minus one. And that's it. And then finally you have obtained this value. So the answer is the f molar flow rate of nitrogen in the stream one to the reactor is inversely um, proportional to the fractional conversion of nitrogen with 500. Okay, so we have learned about the recycle and I'd like to add one more thing. That is the purge or splitter. If you have some contaminants in the raw materials, like some um, nitrogen in the air for the oxygen source, then the contaminants, in this case nitrogen, accumulate in the process and can cause severe prob problems. And sometimes it is very difficult to analyze our systems. So there are three solutions. The simplest solution is no recycle. Don't use recycle. 
And the second one, separation of contaminants from either the reactor feed or product stream, of course, but we need to have more money to set up the separator. The other thing is to compromise between 0% and 100% recycle. In the previous uh, slides, we uh, have thought about the 100% recycle process. However, I'd like to the control the percentage of recycle by suppressing the problems of contaminant. So, in this case, we could install a splitter to make some purge uh, of a portion of the unreacted reactant into the environment. Okay, so that is the process, having recycle plus purging. The same thing, mixer, reactor, separator, then you could have product and reactant. If you have a very low uh, fractional conversion for this reactor, then it is better to use the uh, recycle strategy. However, if you have connect directly the separator into the mixer, then you cannot control the percentage of recycle. Only 100% recycle is allowed. So, between the mixer and separator, I'd like to put uh, an equipment, which is the splitter. Splitter will divide two streams and one stream is going to the outside of the, uh, the process, so purge, let me say purge or bypass stream, and the other thing is going back to the mixer. So this is the splitter, and by using the splitter, again, we can control the percentage of recycle. Uh, let me define a uh, parameter to characterize the splitter. That is the fractional F split S for the stream J. So what is that? Very simple. Let me think about the purge stream. Fractional split of purge stream can be defined as the amount of flow rate for this stream to the input stream. Or you can also define the fractional split uh, for the recycle stream. In this case, the fractional split for the recycle stream is the mole flow rate of species I of recycle stream to the same species I in the input stream to the splitter. That's it. That is the fractional split. So this is the definition. And uh, I'd like to introduce one more equation. It is actually nothing. The characteristics of splitter is not to change the composition for each stream, right? That is the different point from the separator. So, the composition of species I in the recycle, recycle should be the same as the composition of species I in purging is equal to the composition of species I in input. I mean, the composition of all three uh, streams should be the same. That is the characteristics of the splitter. So right now, we have two equations. The first one is the fractional split definition. The other thing, the other thing is the compositions are the same for all streams. This is the example 4.11 about the recycle plus purge. We are still on the ammonia synthesis. We want to make 1000 kg mole ammonia per hour from nitrogen and hydrogen. This is a kind of basis. We feed nitrogen and hydrogen as reactants to a steady state continuous flow process. I'd like to emphasize this word, steady state, so you don't need to think about the accumulation term for material balance equation. At 
stoichiometric ratio. So, the molar ratio of nitrogen to hydrogen is 1 over 3. To save money, we purchase nitrogen that is contaminated with 2 mole percent argon, unfortunately. Argon is an inert gas, but it's too expensive to separate argon from nitrogen, although it's easy to separate argon from ammonia. <laughs> nitrogen and hydrogen are fed to the process at their stoichiometric ratio. Actually, it was um, the, the presented in the other sentence also. The reactor operates at a single pass fractional conversion of 0 0.2. <coughs> the first question is, show why inserting a splitter into the flow sheet is required. In this slide, I'd like to answer about this question. Why inserting a splitter into the flow sheet is required. So without splitter, uh, let me try to draw a flow diagram including ammonia synthesis reactor with some recycle strategy. Uh, in fresh feed, FF stream, uh, nitrogen, argon, hydrogen is introduced to mixer. And then a mixture of those three things is introduced into the reactor, then finally go to the separator. Of course, we have uh, ammonia as a desired product in the stream P, product stream. Also, unreacted nitrogen and hydrogen is found in this stream. So, uh, this unreacted one is recycled to the mixer. In this case, I didn't use the splitter. So, 100% recycling uh, is done in this flow diagram. The main point is argon. Unfortunately, we have a tiny amount of argon uh, in this uh, fresh feed stream. Then, that argon is introduced into the system, but this argon is totally recycled inside of the system. Uh, let me develop or set up the material balance equations about the argon. So, let's use the tear strategy. Uh, let me break this line and then reactor is to start uh, reactor is starting uh, for making the material balance equation for argon for the reactor argon is not included in the reaction for making the ammonia so output of argon is equal to input of argon i mean stream 2 is equal to stream 1 for the argon this is the material balance equation of argon for reactor. And then let's go to the second unit following the reactor. Then, uh, in, the uh, in the recycle stream, you can find argon. However, you cannot find the argon in the product stream. So, stream R, or recycle stream, is equal to stream 2, input stream for separator in terms of argon. How about mixer? Uh, we have two input and one output for the mixer. And all of the three streams have the uh, argon. So the output, one stream 1 is equal to recycle stream plus fresh feed stream. That is the material balance equation for the argon in the mixer. Okay, we have right now three units and therefore we have three different material balance equations. Then by combining those three um, uh, the, the equations, then we could uh, conclude that the recycle stream should be equal to the stream one. Let me check it. 1 is equal to 2, and 2 is equal to R, right? So, stream 1 to the reactor should be same as the recycle stream for argon. And then, 
let me put those two things, this, this relationship into uh, the material balance equation for mixer. So 1 is equal to R, then the molar flow rate of fresh feed of argon should be 0. Your material balance is are saying like that. You should not have the argon in your fresh feed to satisfy those three material balance equation. Weird. Why? It means no. Uh, let me check this flow diagram again. So here is the pen. Then let me take a system uh, for the whole process like that and like that here. Then we have one input and we have the other up there. So let me check the input stream. We have argon in the input. However, in the output stream, we have no argon there. What does it mean? Argon is found in the inlet, so argon is continuously provided into the system. However, there are no exit for the argon, no way out for the argon. It means as time goes by, uh, the argon is accumulated inside of the system. Even if there is some uh, argon accumulation inside of the system, we have assumed that this process is working at a steady state continuous flow. So it means uh, that our system is violating the steady state condition. So the answer should be like that. We should not have the argon in the fresh feed stream. Okay, but anyway, right now our plan is to use the cheaper nitrogen gas including 2% argon there. Therefore, we cannot use this kind of recycling, total recycling system because argon is accumulated and the steady state or condition will be broken. Then, it is reason why we should insert a splitter into this flow sheet. So let me think about the purge. It means right now in this flow diagram, all of the uh, unreacted nitrogen, hydrogen plus impurity is 100% recycled. However, after you inserted a splitter between the separator and the mixer, then you can control the degree of recycling. It means you could discard a portion of unreacted plus uh, impurity ones from the separator. So right now I have put this splitter in the previous uh, process. So splitter is found between separator and mixer. Some of uh, nitrogen, uh, some of the mixture of nitrogen, argon, hydrogen is discarded into the, the environment by the uh, bypass stream or purge stream. Of course, the other portion of those mixture is going back to the mixer and then we can control the amount of R and amount of B uh, um, by splitter. Okay, then The second question was to derive an equation that relates the fresh nitrogen feed rate, this one, Fre the nitro molar flow rate of nitrogen in fresh feed, uh, to the fractional split. Fractional split uh, is the performance specification for the splitter. So <coughs> the question can be said to be the molar flow rate of nitrogen in fresh feed is the function of uh, fractional split to bypass? That is the question. Um, so we will focus on the nitrogen. Then uh, for the nitrogen, let me think about the degree of freedom. Of course, degree of freedom should be zero. I mean, by analyzing the degree of freedom, then I could conclude that conclude that the nitrogen molar flow rate of fresh feed stream can be 
uh, described by fractional split or not. Okay, freedom. So, I, I'm saying about the freedom about the nitrogen. I don't take care of uh, other um, compounds like argon or hydrogen. In this case, I'd like to focus on nitrogen. So, degree of freedom for nitrogen. You can find the nitrogen variable in each stream. Fresh feed, one stream one, stream two, stream three, product feed, uh, bypass feed, and recycle feed. So, total number of streams are seven, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So, seven stream variables for nitrogen are there. So, seven freedoms. And plus one more thing. Nitrogen is involved in the um, chemical reaction equation for nitrogen synthesis. So, one reaction is there. So, one xi, well, one, the extent of reaction is the another freedom. So, totally, the freedom uh, is uh, uh, counted as 8 here. And then it's time to go to the restrict. So, the first one is, first, the first restrict is uh, output. I mean, you know, in the process, in the stream P, product stream, you are finding only ammonia. That is to say, there are no nitrogen there, because all of the nitrogen or the other thing is going to the stream 3 after the separator. So, zero uh, nitrogen for stream P. This is the first restrict for the upstream. The other thing, xi value. You could obtain the value of xi or the extent of reaction for the ammonia synthesis from basis. From the problem statement, basis was 1000 kg more ammonia per hour. That is our target. So, um, <coughs> the extent of reaction can be calculated from basis or ammonia production rate per the stoichiometric co coefficient of that ammonia. So this should be plus 2. So xi is 500 kg more per hour. So one the, the, we, we know the value about the xi. This is another restrict. The other thing is, for mass balance equation, because we have four different units, each unit has one equation for nitrogen. So, right now we have four different units, means four mass balance or more balance equations. One more thing, fractional conversion was given to you. In the problem statement, fractional conversion of nitrogen was 0.2. Um, and by definition, the fractional conversion is equal to xi per the molar flow rate of nitrogen of stream 1. I mean, stream 1 means the input to the reactor. So, um, right now we know the value of xi, or the extent of reaction, like 500 kilogram more per hour. So, you could calculate the value of the stream 1 for nitrogen. That was the 2,500 kilogram mole per nitrogen per hour. Anyway, fractional conversion is known. This is another uh, restrict. And then right now, 1, 2, 6, 7. 7 restricts. 8 freedom, 7 restricts, and degree of freedom is 1. Then, let me think about the fractional split. Of course, in this case, fractional split is unknown. However, um, the question is to derive an equation that relates the fresh nitrogen feed rate to the fractional split. So, fractional split is the x variable. That is to say, if we fixed the, fric uh, the fractional split to bypass, then the, the, the restrict, number of restrictions is going to 8, then we could solve the problem. It means 
we could describe all variables as the function of fractional split. Right? So if you count the fractional split as the restrict, then degree of freedom is zero. Again, we could describe all variables as the function of fractional split. Okay, that's it. Then, okay, so let me uh, obtain the this function of fractional split for describing the uh, nitrogen in fresh feed stream. Mass balance equation, later separator splitter mixer. So stream 2 for the nitrogen, I'm saying about the nitrogen here, stream 2 for the nitrogen is stream 1 as the input plus generation term. About the separator, stream 3 should be the same as the stream 2. How about splitter? Uh, B plus R, stream B plus stream R is equal to stream 3 here. And how about mixer? Stream 1 is equal to fresh feed plus recycle, right? So those four guys are the mass balance or mole balance equation of nitrogen for each unit. The other uh, specification is here, fractional conversion was 0 0.2, right? And by definition, fractional conversion can be described by the product of stoichiometric coefficient with the extent of reaction per the stream 1 or stream 2 is equal to 1 minus fractional conversion. In this case, case 80% of the stream 1 is remained in the stream 2 for the nitrogen. The other thing, fractional split, of course we don't have any uh, values about that, but we will get this fractional split as the x variable. Fs is equal to the b, b stream, stream b, stream bypass or purge, bypass stream per stream 3 from the separator to the splitter. Okay, right now we have those equations are there. And let me start with the fractional split because I'll try to describe this one, the nitrogen in fresh feed uh, by the function of fractional split. So fractional split is equal to bypass per stream 3. And stream 3 is equal to stream 2, right? And Stream 2 is equal to 1 plus generation term. Or stream 2 is equal to 1 minus fractional conversion with the stream 1. So three, stream 3 is going uh, is described by fractional conversion, the value of which is 0 0.2, and the stream 1. Here we know the value about the stream 1. So right now uh, the stream 3 is calculated. How about stream B, bypass stream? Bypass stream uh, is equal to here, stream 3 minus recycle stream, 3 minus recycle stream is equal to 3 minus R can be converted to 1 minus fresh feed, stream 1 minus fresh feed, and also stream 3 can be described by fractional conversion with um, the stream 1. Then put there, then finally, P stream B bypass is equal to fresh feed minus fractional conversion, actually 0 0.2 with the stream 1. Then, by reshuffling all of those things, we could find uh, fractional split is described by fresh feed. Actually, that is the Y function for the question. Minus known value of the fractional conversion, known value of this team one, everything is known value. Okay, so fresh feed can be described by the fractional split and fractional conversion and the feed stream of nitrogen. So finally, I can say fresh feed stream of nitrogen is 500 kilo mole per hour plus 2000 fractional conversion of split to bypass. 
So let me draw a graph or a curve for this one. X axis is the fractional split to purge or fractional split to bypass. The Y axis is the nitrogen fresh feed. So this equation follows this red line. Okay. At a uh, zero per zero fractional split, it means total cycle, totally cycle, then the nitrogen fresh feed should be five hundred. However, as the fractional split to purge increases, so more amount of unreacted and impurity things is going to there, then uh, you should increase the nitrogen fresh feed or something like that. Okay, let's go to the other um, equation. Here's the question. To derive an equation that relates the argon rate to the reactor. Argon rate to the reactor in the stream 1 with the fractional split. So, again, the question is like that. The molar flow rate of argon in the stream 1 is the function of fractional split. Let me try to do some degree of freedom analysis for argon in this case. Freedom, seven stream variables, right? So we have seven streams and each stream have, well, might have argon. So seven stream variables for uh, non-nitrogen. So for argon, and which is equal to seven. And the other thing is restrict. one input here. Uh, in the problem statement, you can find the argon is 0.02% of nitrogen. So, the first restrict from the input. And the other thing is the output. I mean, in the product stream, you should not have the argon. So, it should be zero. And the other thing is for mass balance equation or mole balance equations because we have four different units. Each unit have one equation uh, of the argon. Then, so right now, 6. So 7 minus 6 is equal to 1. Degree of freedom is 1. Then, if you, ha you have fixed the value of fractional split, then degree of freedom is going to zero. It means all of the variables can be described by fractional split, like in the nitrogen cases. So let's do the same thing uh, by using the mole balance equation for argon and system specification. So tell strategy and let me break this line, then let me start with the reactor, then separator, splitter, mixer. So, reactor. You know, argon is not involved in the nitrogen synthesis reaction. So, 2 is equal to 1. And how about separator? Uh, you cannot find any argon in the P or product stream, so 3 is equal to 2. How about splitter? Uh, R plus B is equal to 3. Here. And the mixer. 1 is equal to fresh feed plus recycle. 1 is equal to fresh feed plus recycle. Okay, that's it. And how about the system specification? Fractional split there. And we don't need to use the fractional conversion because uh, the argon is not involved in the reaction. Okay, so mm, let me start with here. Those by combining those three equations, 1 is equal to 2 is equal to 3 is, e is going to here. So R plus B is equal to 1, right? Because 1 is equal to 3. The other thing is about the mixer. So um, this 1 um, is equal to R plus FF and you can remove R and R on the left side of the reaction and the right side of the reaction. So fresh feed should be equal to the, by, the, the bypass. 
It means fresh feed of argon should be the same as the bypass of argon. Of course, I, I'd like to say one kilogram more per hour argon is introduced, introduced into the system. It means one kilo more per more argon per hour should be going out of the system. So B should be the same as the fresh feed. Bypass is equal to fresh feed in terms of argon. Of course, thing. That is the result. And then let me try to um, the describe the argon in the stream 1 to the reactor as the function of frictional split. Um, so oh, the bypass, uh, let me think about the frictional split uh, definition. Bypass is fresh feed, right? And 3 is equal to 1. Stream 3 is equal to stream 1 because 3 is equal to 2, 2 equal to 1. So the stream 1 is equal to fresh feed because B is equal to fresh feed per FS or fractional split to bypass. Then what we know is that the argon fresh feed is 2% of nitrogen fresh feed. So you can convert argon to nitrogen here, 0 0.02 molar fluoride of nitrogen in fresh feed per fractional split. In the previous slide, we have described this nitrogen in fresh feed in terms of some known values of the stream on for nitrogen and fractional conversion of nitrogen. So it was the 500 plus 2000 fractional split. So put it there, then finally we could say the argon in the stream 1 is 40 plus 10 per fractional split. So um, the argon in the stream 1 is inversely proportional to the fractional split, unlike uh, nitrogen fresh feed. So let me draw um, this line here. Something like that. Um, so, <coughs> low frictional split, like at almost zero frictional split, nitrogen fresh feed is approaching uh, 500 kilogram more power. What is the meaning of low frictional split? It means almost zero in the bypass stream. So the most of unreacted plus impurity uh, content is going back to the mixer before the reactor. So almost 100% recycle. In this case, nitrogen fresh feed is going down to 500 kg mole per hour and argon flow to the reactor here is very high. Uh, actually, at zero frictional split, this value where the argon content to the reactor is going to the, one, the, in, going to the infinity. Look at that. Uh, put the zero value to here, and then this is going to the infinity, and argon in the stream 1 is infinity. So it means um, if you want to use the very high degree of recyclers, you should think about and you should consider about high concentration of argon inside of the reactor. Let's go to the high frictional split. It means very low level of recycling. So most of argon is going out of the uh, system uh, through the splitter. Therefore, argon flow to the reactor is small. So it's approaching to the just 2% of nitrogen. And in that case, 
nitrogen fresh feed is going up because you know we didn't use the recycle it means we should provide more amount of nitrogen to the reactor by using the fresh feed so it means almost no, no recycle that's it for the recycle plus purge you have learned about the fractional conversion to characterize the reactors used in your process. However, fractional conversion is not sufficient to fully characterize the reactor performances. Let me think about some situations having the side reactions. Usually we are thinking or we have thought that the reactant is going to the desired product, sometimes plus some uh, byproduct. And if you have the 100% conversion, maybe you could say my reactor is really perfect. However, usually you cannot achieve the 100% conversion. Uh, and also, sometimes your desired product is going further to undesired product. So, another side reactions. This is a kind of series reaction from some reactant A to desired product P, then it is going to undesired product U. Also, you could think about the parallel reaction. Of course, your reactant is mainly goes going to the desired product. At the same time, this reactant could go to undesired product like U prime. So this situation can be considered as the parallel reactions. So through the series reactions or through the parallel reactions, we could generate the undesired product in addition to desired product. So we should think about some selectivity between the desired and the undesired product, where sometimes we should define some yield. Uh, let me start with the steady state continuous flow reactors. I'd like to define the selectivity or fractional selectivity and fractional yield. The concept is similar to each other and the selectivity can be easily converted to yield or vice versa by using the fractional conversion. Okay, so here's the first thing I'd like to introduce in this slide. Uh, that is the fractional selectivity or selectivity. The definition of selectivity is the amount of A reactant is, uh, which is converted to the desired product P per the amount of the reactant consumed. So let me write down some equations here selectivity or fractional selectivity of the reactant A to the desired product B is closely related to the amount of uh, the desired product P generated per the amount of A the reactant consumed. Then the, uh, the amount of P generated is converted to the equivalent amount of A by using this stoichiometric coefficient ratio between P and A. I'd like to give you a simple example, then you could understand more easily. Let you, let's go back to the upper side and right now I have some reaction, uh, reaction uh, for making the ammonia. We have always had um, ammonia. So ammonia plus 3H2 is going to 2 and H3. Uh, unfortunately, uh, in the reactant mixture, we have some oxygen, very small amount of oxygen. So this oxygen is reacted with nitrogen, finally going to the nitrogen oxide. Then let me check the uh, amount of each compound. I have introduced three moles of nitrogen into the reactor and 1.9 moles of nitrogen is unreacted. So you could find the 1.9 uh, 
a mole of nitrogen in the axis stream of the reactor. So right now, 2.1, 2, pl 2 plus 0 0.1 moles are reacted with some the other reactants. Two moles of them is reacted with hydrogen, actually six moles of hydrogen, then finally, which is going to the desired product, ammonia. Right now, we have four moles of ammonia there. At the same time, the 0 0.1 mole of nitrogen is reacted with the impurity oxygen, of course, at 0 0.1 moles, which is going to the 0 0.2 moles of nitrogen ox oxide generated. By using this situation, let me calculate the selectivity. So, uh, total amount of nitrogen consumed is 2 plus 0 0.1 moles, so 2.1 moles, right? And at the same time, 4 moles of ammonia is generated here. And I'd like to, uh, the amount of P into the amount of A. I mean, in this main reaction, uh, for, uh, the, for generating 2 moles of ammonia, we need to have 1 moles of nitrogen. It means the equivalent amount of A, uh, which is equivalent to P generated, is not the 4 moles, but the 2 moles, because uh, 2 moles of ammonia is generated by using 1 moles of nitrogen. So here is the 4 moles of uh, the, the ammonia is generated. It means the equivalent amount of A for this one is 2 moles of uh, the nitrogen. So 4 by 1 over 2, this comes from the uh, stoichiometry coefficient uh, for the nitrogen and the, this is the stoichiometric coefficient of the um, ammonia. So 1 here, 2 here, so 4 by 1 over 2 is going to 2 moles of A or nitrogen. So resultantly 2 by 2.1 is going to 0 0.95. This is the selectivity of nitrogen to ammonia in this example. Okay, then let's go to the yield. For the selectivity, basis is the amount of A consumed. I'd like to emphasize that the A consumed, the consumption amount of A, so delta A value. However, in the yield, everything is the same, but as the basis, we are using the, the amount of A, well, the amount of reactant uh, as the input. So, for example, in this situation, or well, in this example, I have said I have introduced uh, 3 mole nitrogen, actually 3 mole per hour, something like that. So, 3 mole of nitrogen is introduced into the system. So, this is the 3, and the other, si the other thing is the same. Uh, the, the product formers, formers des of desired products are generated, and formers is are equivalent into two moles of nitrogen, so, right? So two per three moles are introduced, then it is going to sixty-seven percent. So yield is sixty-seven percent, and selectivity is ninety-five percent. Additionally, let me calculate the conversion. Fractional conversion uh, is moles of reactant consumed actually the denominator of the selectivity. So, moles of reactant consumed, let me check everything. For the reaction 1, 2 moles. For the reaction 2, 0 0.1 moles. So, totally 2.1 moles are consumed, right? So, numerator is, numerator is 2.1. And moles of, re of reactant fat, that is 3 moles. 3 moles nitrogen is introduced into the system. So, 2.1 per 3 is going to 0 0.7. So, fractional conversion is 0.7, or 70%. Actually, the yield is obtained 
by the product of selectivity with fractional conversion. So let me check it. In the numerator of the fractional conversion, we have the moles, molar amount of reactant consumed. At the same time, in the fractional conversion, you can find the same amount in the denominator A consumed, moles of reactant consumed. So, uh, multi by multiplying the fractional selectivity by the fractional conversion, you could obtain the fractional yield because the numerator no, 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 no. The denominator of fractional conversion is moles of reactant fat, which was the basis of the fractional yield. So again, se selectivity by conversion is going to yield. Okay? So again, this is the definition of selectivity and yield from the previous slide. Don't try to memorize them. Just just to try to um, the understand. Again, this is the amount of A consumed, right? And this is the amount of the desired product generated. And then I'd like to change it, the amount of P or desired product into the equivalent level of the amount of A. So by using the stoichiometric coefficient ratio of A to P, you can change the P into A. So, that is the sele selectivity. As you go to the yield, instead of the, the amount of consumed A, I'd like to uh, use the amount of reactant A um, the introduced into the reactors. So, the molar flow rate of A in the influx of the stream. That is for the steady state continuous flow reactor. And for batch reactors, it is a little bit different but almost the same. So the same stoichiometric coefficient ratio. And for the denominator and numerator, we are using almost the same thing. But instead of just this value, we are using the integration value for the time. Like that. And this is this is the initial value for the reactant A. Uh, so again, I have said about that in the previous slide. Yield is the product of fractional conversion by selectivity. That's it. Okay, here is the example about the selectivity oh, and yield. Uh, right now we have a reaction network, so ethanol is going to the um, acetaldehyde. That is the um, the, pro the desired product here, uh, which is defined by the reaction one and xi one, where the extent of reaction one is characterizing this reaction. But unfortunately, the desired product is converted to finally. Um, the carboxylate of uh, the compound. Um, so actually acetic acid. This is the acetic acid and this is the reaction 3. Uh, this reaction 3 is characterized by xi 3 Also at the same time, ethanol can be converted to the carbon dioxide alternative, alternatively. Uh, so, this is uh, characterized by Xi2. So, we have three reactions and two reactions are in series and two reactions are in parallel. So, um, let me go to this table. Um, this is the ethanol and then oxygen, right? And then Acetic acid, AC, and H2O. Uh, no, not acetic acid, acetaldehyde, and H2O, acetic acid, and CO2. Uh, the, by using the Xi, we could calculate the, um, the generation or consumption um, 
terms for each compound. For example, ethanol is um, uh, is consumed for the reaction one, right? For the reaction one and reaction two. So the consumption term can be um, described by minus psi one minus psi two, right? How about oxygen? Oxygen is consumed for all three reactions. So by using this stoichiometric coefficient, minus 0 0.5 xi1 minus 3 xi2 minus xi3 or something like that. And acetic acid, no, 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 acetaldehyde and acetic acid. So let me think about the fractional conversion. Fractional conversion is the ratio of the, um, the ethanol consumption, consumption amount per the input of ethanol into the system. So this is the molar flow rate of ethanol in the input. And the consumption amount can be characterized by xi1 plus xi2 instead of minus xi1 minus xi2. You should put the minus sign because I'd like to count the amount of consumption, not generation. That's it. How about the fractional selectivity? Fractional selectivity. So let me um, um, count the denominator. What is the definition of selectivity? In the denominator, you should have the consumption amount of reactant A, or in this case, ethanol. So maybe xi1 plus xi2 right and then uh, in the numerator you should count the amount of or generation term of the desired product in this case uh, acetaldehyde so acetaldehyde is gener generated from one and consumed from the reactor uh, three right so generation from one and which is consumed to the carboxylic acid uh, via reaction 3. So xi1 minus 2 xi3, so here is the, the, the product um, generation amount, right? And it's time to convert the amount of product P or acetaldehyde into the equivalent amount of the reactant A or ethanol. So let me check the equation, chemical reaction equation for this reaction from here to there. Then the stoichiometric ratio between the ethanol and um, acetaldehyde is just one. So by one, then we have obtained this kind of things. How about fractional yield? Everything is the same, but instead of the denominator, the numerator as which is the xi1 plus xi2 or the consumption amount of the reactant A, I'd like to put the input amount or input flow rate of the reactant ethanol. So this is that and sub E with in. That's it. So we have uh, described the fractional conversion fractional selectivity and fractional yield in terms of the extent of reaction with the input flow rate of the ethanol. Okay, <clears throat> the same example. Uh, we want to, to design and build a plant to produce one two zero zero kilogram more acetaldehyde CHG three CHO per hour. This is the basis from ethanol and air. You know you have met the chemical reaction equations in the previous example. Lab data indicate that if we use a new catalyst and adjust the feed ratio to uh, five point seven moles ethanol per mole oxygen we can expect to achieve 25% conversion of ethanol in the reactor. 
with the selectivity for acetaldehyde of 0.6 or 60%. So here, two system specification, conversion and selectivity. Also, the input feed ratio was fixed between the ethanol and oxygen. The only byproducts are acetic acid and water. Thus, reaction 1 and 3 of example 4.12 previous example are important. So, we don't need to consider about the reaction 2. It means the extent of re reaction 2 is 0. Then, uh, determine everything. Okay, great. So, we have ethanol and oxygen as reactants. Of course, uh, we could have the nitrogen, but you don't need to think about nitrogen because it is inert gas, which is not involved in the reactor. The other thing is, in the upstream, unreacted ethanol and the desired product acetaldehyde and the undesired product acetic acid with water. Then here is the reaction 1 and reaction 2. So let me ch check. Uh, the degree of freedom. So we have five compounds. One, two, the same thing, three, four, five. Five compounds, so we could set up the five material balance equations. And basis is the one or 1200 kilogram more acetaldehyde per hour for the desired product. And degree of freedom, uh, freedom is two input and for output and we have two reactions for the reactor system so two xi so totally eight unknowns or eight um, freedoms are there and how about the restrictor equation let me check the input feed ratio to 5.7 moles ethanol per mole oxygen something like that there is the first restrict and how about the output stream so basis is the output stream here, one output plus um, two system specification. What is that? Uh, selectivity is 0 0.6, and the other thing is the frictional conversion, 25%. Can be uh, described by J1, J3, and also input flow rate of ethanol, and also plus five material balance equations about the ethanol, oxygen, mm, acetic acid, and acetaldehyde with water. So that's it. And we have eight equations. Then you can solve the problem. Actually, we have nine equations. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine equations. So, we could solve the problems. One, one more comment about the selectivity and yield. As a rule of thumb, high selectivity is generally preferred over high conversion because it's very expensive uh, to separate the undesired product from the desired product or something like that. At high selectivity with low single pass conversion and high recycle, high overall conversion to the desired product is achieved with less waste of raw material making undesired products. So I'd like to emphasize that the high selectivity is more important than the high conversion. Uh, however, sometimes high conversion favored over high selectivity. If the first case is byproducts are not terribly toxic. The second, low materials and or desired products are really toxic and reactor operates under extreme conditions of temperature and pressure, then sometimes if um, your systems satisfy those requirements, then it is better uh, to favor the high conversion situation over high selectivity. 
that's it for this selectivity and yield.